Flying 1,000 metres for race number two and another race with a few first starters in it. It's over the class four, five furlongs and Run Run Cool is on the class drop with the blinkers and the hood off. Pacifiers with cows go on. Good news has his first start since November. He's had three trials. Brilliant eight on debut, two trials. Diamond Saw's first start. Three trials for him. Felix the King, stable change. Manfred Mann to Michael Cheng. Happy Trio, five trials. Lip Levite wears cheek pieces for the first time. Miracles and Sweet Diamond have both had five trials. Medical Elite, the blinkers and the tongue tie go on for the first time. And Fortune Marbo wears a tongue tie as well. Tom and Kowloon Easter. He's down to lead on the speed map, but we do know that his start can be a little iffy. It's quite an interesting looking speed map, isn't it? It is almost tower. like a, a pyramid. It gets to the middle and then comes down again. Uh, Lucky Gore should be relatively handy as well. Uh, good news has been handy in his runs. He's been fresh and poor. And of the newcomers, uh, Brilliant Eight's uh, got uh, a little bit of pace. And Diamond Store did miss his last barrier trial, but uh, had jumped out to OK prior to that. Yeah, it had shown a bit. Miracles, uh, likewise, he's, he's missed his last start. Run Run Cool probably come across um, from his inside draw. Uh, and Happy Trio hasn't shown much in his trials. Lucky Gore is where we start. He was, of course, a delayed start to his career after being scratched at the barrier. He since has had one start. Joe rode that day. He rides again on Sunday. And this is what he told Nick. Joe Lucky Gore is a horse that you'll ride in race number two this uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, he ran a, a, a couple of weeks ago, ran a, a really nice debut for, for yourself and Casper. How pleased were you with that performance? Well, I was extremely happy with his performance, but even happier to be able to get him to do things properly in the gate because uh, if people don't know, he can be a bit cranky in the gate. Uh, Casper has done an amazing job with him, spent a lot of time educating him in, into the gate and being able to send him out to the race and start it off, run home well and be competitive, it's a bonus. So I think we're very happy with that. About the race itself, he, I, I, I believe that it's even more than what he has shown his, at his first run in himself. I mean, I think he's even a better horse than what we've seen. Um, it is a very competitive race once again. He's going to be jumping from Garrett, uh, gate number five, which will allow him to just be stepping forward and put himself up there. Should be a fast run race, and uh, hopefully I have a horse target because he's also a kind of a horse that can get a bit green and look around. So those kind of horses would be better if you have something to target. But um, he, he, he's going to win his races very quickly and could be this coming Sunday. Yeah, that's interesting you say that, obviously, because there has been plenty of sort of hype around him, if you will, and the day he was withdrawn, he was obviously very well fancied uh, on that occasion. I'm just talking of the experience, obviously, that's going to stand him in good stead, but just looking at the race on paper, Joe, you're racing against a lot of newcomers, so I guess with having that run, that certainly does put him perhaps one step ahead of, of some of the others in the field. That's for sure. We were in the same shoes as they are at the moment when he ran first last time, his only and first run, and... You see those horses with a little bit of more experience were able to just beat him. They beat him not impressively, just because he's, he's got it. He's got ability and it's just a matter of time until he put it all together and just go for it. And I really believe this is going to be the time. I mean, we've done a lot of work and um, you got to go to the race with confidence and I am. And just on the aspect of you and your trainer, I was, you and Casper have had a wonderful relationship down to um, the last few seasons. Um, obviously, it could be a really big, a big Sunday for you and Casper. I mean, uh, you and him have this this great rapport, don't you? There always just seems to be that that click there where you, you know you can get the results when it when it really matters. Yeah, li listen, Casper is a he's not just a good trainer. He's a good person. He's happy. He's always like cheering you up. I noticed that when I I'm a bit down, he's the first one to step on me and bring me up. Uh, of course, he's a winner. He wants to win. He does put a little bit of a pressure on his riders, but into an extent that never actually gets onto your mind and screw you up. Very nice person to ride for, and I would be very delighted if we could win back-to-back -back, uh, the Hong Kong Derby, a race that most of people around here would love, would love to win. There he is, Joe Marira, who rides Lucky Gore. We move on, to Tom, to Glenelly Generals, who's a last start course and distance winner. He comes from last as we pick up the replay, and he carries an extra two pounds for it too. 
He's pretty, a bit of a, a tricky horse to catch. Of course, flying season, the horse he beat in this uh, effort uh, has since come out and won. He was hard ridden, but really responded and drove through with length ball, but uh, doesn't normally put two together. No, he doesn't. I mean, his last win prior to this was back in uh, 2019, so he hasn't put two together, and it was a nice, a nice enough win from him, but look, I haven't included him in, in this one. All right, we move on from him, Paul, to Good News, who hasn't raced since November, but he did win at his first start in Hong Kong, so he does race well fresh. Yeah, that was over 1,200, though. His, his three runs were over 1,200. Uh, Zach's ridden him in his trials, and he won't be riding him on race day. So he, I looked at him a couple of times, but I'm just going to wait until he gets up to the 1,200. Yeah, I agree as well. Uh, Derek Long rides from Barrier 9, so he's drawn towards the, the stand. Uh, rather, there's nothing wrong with the, the trial. He's been held together. And it's a fortune uh, carrier uh, next uh, to uh, him, and uh, there was nothing wrong with it at all. He raced handy last start, uh, going back uh, to uh, November, but wasn't able to uh, go on and behind uh, Pins Prince. So, yeah, I'm happy to wait till he gets back up to the, the 1,200 metres again. Uh, good news for Chris So and Derek Long, who takes the ride. He draws out in barrier nine, does a good news on the back of those three trials leading into his resumption. Finally, Sweet Diamond is one of the first starters, and this is up at Chung Fa, Tom. Yeah, it is. So now he was a $370,000 Magic Million yearling. He started his career in Australia with uh, Bjorn Baker. He had a, a couple of uh, trials placed in a couple at uh, Canterbury and Warwick Farm there in uh, Sydney. I thought he stayed on OK, yeah, Paul, so I'm going to throw him in uh, as a, a chance here, the son of Zusta. Yeah, I threw him in on a minor line as well. I, I think he's the best of the first starters. Eleven ninety-two pounds those five trials, and it was a nice enough trial. So yeah, he, he goes in for me. That is uh, Sweet Diamond, Ricky, you, Matthew, Poon, the combination with him. But it's Lucky Gore for you, Paul. Yeah, so Lucky Gore. I think uh, he's dropped a bit of weight since uh, that debut run. He's going to strip a lot fitter, and he would have learnt a lot from that. So he's on top. Uh, run, run, cool. Uh, a lot of gear changes with blinkers, and the hood comes off him. Uh, he's got the inside draw, barrier number one, but I think he can get across. Uh, Kalu Nistar's got early pace and then Sweet Diamond of the first starters. Do like the, the four in this though, four, one, three and twelve. Yeah, with the 10 here again, uh, Le Plavit now, uh, he was in the market on debut at 9-1. to one. He had trialled well, uh, got uh, a little bit of a, a squeeze at the start. He wasn't the quickest out and then pulled up with an issue with substantial mucus in the, the track here uh, after the race. So I'll take another chance with him. Cheek pieces are going on and uh, Blake Shin rides for David Hayes. So he'll come up at each way price at Le Plavit, number 10. Four Lucky Gore, obviously tough to beat on his debut run. Run, run, cool dropping in grade and sweet diamond. 10, 4, 1 and 12. Plenty of value from Tom Early. Le Plavit at 34, but it's Paul's uh, uh, on-top selection and best bet Lucky Gore, which is the early favourite at 3.3 for the win.